Hello, everyone, with the next session in the uh, WordPress and AI next chapter uh, event. And I'm here with Jamie Marsland uh, from Poodle Press, who a couple of weeks back rebuilt TechCrunch, which we took several like months to build in 30 minutes using AI. Uh, and uh, it was so interesting to watch the discussion and the follow up of that happening. Um, a little bit of an insider information. Jamie is not feeling too well today. Thank you for being with us even with COVID. So uh, really, really appreciate, uh, really appreciate you showing up and sharing your insights with us. Um, I'm gonna just hand it over to you and uh, I'll see you in about 20 minutes in the Q&A session. Great stuff, thanks Petra. Thank right, hi, every hi, hi everyone. Hope you can see my screen. So um, I've got 20 minutes to talk about AI in 2023. And there's a few things I'm going to show you today. Um, I've been lucky enough to interview everyone you can see up on the screen here today. So Matt Mullenware, Chris Lemmer, Yoast from Yoast, and uh, Sujay from Brainstorm Force, the guys behind uh, Astra. I want to talk about some of the lessons I've learned from them and thread that into the presentation. Um, and then I also want to show you some of the coolest tools that I've found over the last year. Um, some of those integrate into WordPress. Some of those are separate to WordPress, but you might use in the web um, building process. And some of those you'll know, some of those you, you probably won't know, but there's some really exciting stuff on the way. And then I've got, I've got at the end of the presentation, which is 20 minutes, I've got three big predictions that I want to make, which is always highly, highly dangerous and risky, but I've got three big predictions. And then also from everything, um, one lesson, one lesson that I think um, if there's anything, if I was rec um, advising you to think about what from everything that's happening, uh, one lesson that I think you should probably start thinking about fairly soon. So this is this is what we're going to look at: AI trends, AI tools, and then some predictions, which I'm very scared about. Here we go. So um, a little, a tiny bit of context to start with. So AI, probably, especially if you're kind of around this stuff, probably seems like it's everywhere. Um, but it's not, and not everyone is using it. So here's just here's a, a couple of stats for you. So currently, and this is taken uh, from a company called Pew Research, that currently only about 18% of Americans have ever used ChatGPT, which was probably a bit lower than I thought. So, um, and especially you know in my sort of peer group, a lot of people have kind of heard of it, but they're still not using it day to day. So it's still you know we think that lots and lots of people are using it. But but they're not. It's still only about eighteen percent. And this is another bit of research from the same company, uh, slightly newer research that breaks down um, breaks down that those numbers in a bit more detail. This is actually uh, the percentage of U.S. adults that have heard of ChatGPT who have ever used it. So and the bit that's quite interesting how this breaks down demographically between men and women, and also how it breaks down between the ages as well. That's just a bit of context behind where we're at in terms of people using some of the most popular tools. I want to focus in a bit on WordPress now. So this is some information that my friend Hendrik Lewison, I'm sorry, Hendrik, if I pronounced your surname wrong, um, drew out from me. This is actually taken data taken directly from the WordPress.org um, repository, uh, querying the WordPress API. So currently there are 151 WordPress plugins that are tagged as AI. And I've been through quite a few of these just to double check. It's not people gaming the system. And actually, most of them are have AI integrated into them. So we've seen a big growth in terms of the number of WordPress uh, plugins that are now using a, um, AI. And I expect that to grow quite quickly as well. So we, we kind of got there quite quickly. So what I want to do next is take kind of broadly each of the elements of the sort of broad web design process, I guess, and look at, give you some specific examples of some of the coolest tools that I've found uh, and experienced um, out there. So I'm gonna look at website design. There's some amazing tools coming around that help you create um, websites. I'm gonna dive into a bit of content, content generation. I'm gonna have a quick look at chatbots. There's some interesting stuff happening around video and also some thoughts around AI and SEO and where that's going. I've only got 20 minutes, so I'm skimming the surface on this stuff. Um, but let me show you some stuff. So this first one is um, really interesting. This is actually a tool that's not WordPress based. And it's a tool called Reloom. And what this is, is a wireframing tool um, 
And essentially what this does is takes, it lets you create a wireframe and then in, um, embed that into, take that into Figma and Webflow. But when I show you this, I want you to imagine that this is actually being used in WordPress because something like this is coming to a WordPress tool uh, fairly soon. So in this example here, I've gone onto the site and I'm going to type into the prompt here, yoga studio in Cheltenham. My wife's a yoga teacher. And so she's going to build a new website. And then what this does is start to build your sitemap dynamically through AI. So it takes your prompt over here. You can also put in the number of pages and then you can see here, it's actually going to start to generate my structure for me. And this is pretty cool. So it's going to create, this is the home page. Let me zoom in so you can see this. And it's going to create the sections within, within the home page here. Uh, but it's also going to create the sub pages for me down here. You can see this. Now you can interrupt this at any point and you can create other pages and you can actually move these sections around. Let me pause this for you. You can move these sections around in here and delete sections. Uh, but essentially what we're doing here is creating the structure of the website. And uh, let's run. You see this has got a blog as well. And it's actually creating the sort of blog post structure as well. This is just me playing around with it and moving some sections around. And you, so you can imagine this if this was uh, kind of embedded into your WordPress workflow, it'd be kind of phenomenal. Now, the other exciting thing that this does is create wireframes. So you've got two tabs, sitemap up here, which is the bit I've just done, and then wireframe. And then I'm going to click on wireframe, and it immediately creates me all my wireframes. Now, when I first saw this, I immediately thought of WordPress block patterns. I mean, it just seems like a perfect fit for WordPress and block patterns. It's kind of ideal for it. And you can see it's actually taking the content and creating these, these lovely wireframes for me. And just imagine if you could then export this out to your WordPress site or you had this in your WordPress dashboard and you could um, go back and forth between this as you're managing the site. And it's kind of Figma-like in terms of you can zoom in and out of it, as you can see here. So that's called Reloom. It's not integrated into WordPress, but it is coming to this um, ZipWP. ZipWP, which is um, the tool that uh, Brainstorm Force are working on, which creates a website for you, a first draft of a website for you in about 60 seconds. They are integrating uh, that site map functionality into ZipWP. It's not quite ready yet, but this is how ZipWP works. It's the same idea. You put in your prompt up here, and then, yeah, and in this in this example here, I'm actually taking words from a UNICEF website, and it's basically going to create me a website in about sixty seconds. So this is the prompt I'm popping in. And then from that, it's going to create me a website. And I explain a bit how this is actually doing this now. There we go. So they're building the website. And this is the results of the website. Now, they're not dynamically creating the uh, design on here. What they're doing, actually, is they're taking Astra starter templates. So they've got a whole bunch, I think over 100 now, starter templates. And they're also using ChatGPT. And then they're kind of merging these things together to create you a first draft, fully editable first draft of a website, all built on Gutenberg and the block editor. So you can go and edit the stuff. And you can see here, they're also integrating uh, plugins as well. So this is their shortcut donate plugin. But essentially for an end user, it gets them over that first hurdle of creating a website. And that's called ZipWP. Um, it's having a huge amount of interest. They've got a um, big waiting list, but I think they're opening it up now to people so you can start to roll it out. Uh, right, I want to talk about chatbots quickly. So chatbots have had enormous growth. This is one of the most popular ones uh, for WordPress. This is called AI Engine. I've actually done a few videos in this on my YouTube channel. And currently there are about 40,000 downloads and it's growing pretty quickly. They have an enormously uh, popular and active Discord channel where people get into huge amounts of detail on how they're using this. But essentially it's a, an easy way for non-technical people to add chatbots to their websites. Let me show you a few examples of how I've used it on my site and a few other examples. So this is one application that I used it for on my site. So I built some simple SEO tools for my customers so they can come to my website and they can create some um, stuff. So in this case, they're gonna create an SEO calendar. So they just pop in their keyword in this little box here. Let me run this forward for you. Hit submit, and it's going to create a, a little SEO calendar for them. Now, the key to this stuff is creating the prompt in the background. And you can see here, here's my uh, little SEO calendar, which they can then export out and um, use on their sites. 
here's another example. This is this is uh, I built this. These these only take about ten minutes to build. They're super quick. That's what's that's what's nice about this. This is actually one I built for uh, musicians, guitarists, and what they can do here is come to this site, and you put in the artist and you put in the song. So I'm putting in um, Nirvana here. You can see this smells like Teen Spirit, and it'll basically generate you all the chords and the lyrics for that song, just using um, talking to Chat GPT in the background, and you can see it's doing um, putting the chords in the right places for me as well. And again, the key on this one is the prompt. But here's a quick look at the the back end for you. And one of the nice things about this is it's just native native WordPress, so it's just using the block editor to build this stuff out. You can see how I built this. Um, I've just used blocks, so the cover block is the background image, and then within here I've got the AI forms blocks. Again, I'm skipping over these very quickly, but it's really not technical to build. It only takes about 10 minutes to build one of these. And then the final example I'm going to show you is another uh, way of using this. And I think what's interesting about these is that you can actually create tools for your customers to use. So you draw. It's another way of adding value to your websites. This is a suggestion engine that I built. So if you're looking to uh, for a new book to read, then this, <laughs> this might be useful. So in this example, you choose what book type you want to read, um, either fiction or nonfiction. So I think in this example, I've chosen fiction. And then you put in your favorite book, The Old Man and the Sea by Hemingway, in my case, and then hit submit. And it's going to suggest um, five books that you might like to read. Again, it's all just built using the block editor. Uh, we're also seeing other interesting chatbots emerge in the WordPress space. This is um, a really cool one. This is called Dotspot, Docspot AI. This is primarily aimed at support documentation. So you can actually train it on your own support doc documentation. So um, if, the idea is it's going to uh, massively reduce your support, support costs and because people can go online and query your support um, information very easily and get a sensible answers very, very quickly. So chatbots have, have um, been really, really interesting. We've also seen uh, lots of activity around content generation in terms of uh, AI writers. This is one of my favorite ones. This is actually one uh, by Jetpack. And it's one of my favorite ones because of the way it integrates. Well, there's a num number of reasons. One is it integrates directly into the block editor. So you're right within the block editor. You don't have to leave the editing experience. The second big reason why I really like this one is that you can you can either accept or edit the content that it generates. So you don't have to just accept it. You can go back and say, right, make it shorter, make it longer, change the tone of it, or reprompt it. And you can see up here in this demo, it's actually at the moment until I accept it, it's just popping it into um, the AI assistant experimental block. It's only once I accept it that it actually turns itself into normal blocks, normal Gutenberg blocks. And so it's really cool, I, and it suits the way I create content. There you go. So I've accepted it now, and it turns itself into normal block editor blocks that you can do the normal block editor styles and all that kind of cool stuff. The other cool thing that they're starting to play with with, with this one is, let me show you this if I can wind it forward, is this. They're starting to integrate directly into the blocks themselves. In this example, we're going to say the prompt is create a table of the last 10 winners of the English Premier League. And you'll see in a second, it'll actually create the table directly for me in here. Let's wind this forward. There you go. It's create, created the table. And that, again, is a block editor table, so I can do all my normal uh, block editor table stuff. So you can see where this might go. You might say in the prompt, create me a hero image uh, for a sale that's going on next Tuesday, and it'll create the whole, um, the whole block for you. So I think that's a really interesting uh, plugin. There are many other ones out there as well. Uh, we're also seeing, as you've already heard, that um, AI is being integrated into some of the most popular um, SEO plugins. So S Yoast SEO and Rank Mast SEO are integrating um, AI directly in them. Uh, right, I want to show you some cool stuff now that's not directly um, built into WordPress, but it's using third-party tools that you can use in WordPress. Here's a cool example. Um, these are going to get a little bit freaky. So this one is a tool called um, Eleven Labs, and what it does, you can upload your transcript to it of your blog post in this example. So I'm starting to use this on my site in this way, and it'll actually create an audio file um, that you can embed. And in this case, I've just used the um, audio block that comes with the block editor to embed it on my site. But it goes further; you can actually train it on your own voice. So rather than just having some generic voice speaking your text, you can actually train it on your voice. So I'm going to play. 
I'm going to try and play my voice. I'm going to turn my microphone around so you can see this. Design and user experience, UX, breadcrumbs are an indispensable tool. They have simplified and enhanced website navigation, creating a user-friendly environment that allows for seamless browsing. So that's not me speaking. That's the that's the AI speaking. I just told I just uploaded a few samples of my voice and it now knows what I speak. So I can upload any document to it and generate content that sounds a bit like me. My children said it didn't sound like me. They said it sounded nicer and a bit posher than me. But I think that's when I was uploading my sample. Um, I was probably putting on a slightly um, fake voice. Right. We've also seen, um, which you've probably seen, we've seen other um, really cool AI tools emerging, things like Mid Journey and also Adobe Firefly. And now in Adobe Photoshop, the beta, you have generative AI. Here's an example of a couple of ways you can use it. Um, which you can also imagine, hopefully, how you might use this for, like, if you've got a WooCommerce store, you might want to uh, manipulate your product shops so they look a bit nicer. There's lots of ways you might use this. This is the, in this example of what I'm going to do, I've got a photo of Matt uh, on stage, and I'm going to expand the canvas and automatically fill in this area with AI, and it's going to look fairly seamless. Here we go, hopefully. There we go. So that's the new background. And, it, you know, if you want a different proportion of image, you can imagine that might be useful. Uh, and then I'm going to take this a little bit further in this example here. You can see I've actually put a marquee around Matt, Matt's jacket. And I think he might look better in a leather jacket. So let's do that. The prompt is just add a leather jacket. And there we go. Matt's now got a um, the yeah, Matt's now got a leather jacket. And you can you can just carry on. You can um, carry on in filling and generating content in here. Um, Mid Journey now has in painting as well, where you can actually generate an image in a mid journey and you can then select an area and add other things into it. So this stuff is developing at quite a pace. Here's a fun example. This is um, the Mona Lisa, which took um, Da Vinci about four years to paint, I think. And I thought it might look nicer in a landscape. This is slightly sacrilegious, but what I'm gonna do is just generate a new background for this, because I thought it might look nice in a landscape view. And there we go, there's the new um, Mona Lisa in rather than a portrait format, now in a landscape format. And you can see over on the right here, it actually gives you three different variations that you can play with. Um, a few other cool things to show you. So text in images is getting better. Um, this has been rubbish in Mid Journey, but now this is a tool called Ideogram, which I only discovered a couple of weeks ago, where you can actually upload, you can prompt it. So this is the prompt up here, a poster for a country music band called Shenanigans. And it'll actually put the text in the poster for you. Now it's not perfect, but you can see it's getting there. We're, you know, we're getting to the point where we've got text and graphics, and it's almost it's almost usable. So I imagine that's not too far away. Um, that's a cool thing. Uh, for any creators out there of you that are creating uh, video content, then there are loads of tools emerging. Some video ones, which I want to show you quickly now. This is one I use actually to, to take long form content and to turn it into short form uh, clips that you can share on things like YouTube Shorts or TikTok or Twitter. And it, um, I've used this uh, with, and I guess the first, here's an example. I use this with my video with uh, Matt. And this is just an example of it took a, uh, like a 45 minute interview and it automatically generated me these captions. Let me just play this. The question is, do you think that's gonna get worse with AI? or better? Mm. I think there will be more, uh, yeah, more disparity in terms of like, there will be people or societies or- So it automatically chops up the video for you. So in this one, I think I ended up with about 10 video clips and automatically did all the captions for me as well. Also automatically gave me a summary of why it thought these were the right clips to choose as well. So that's another way that you can use um, cool tools to be more productive. Here's a really freaky one that I only discovered um, last night. Um, this is kind of weird and cool. Uh, this is what this is going to do. I'm going to play this for you. It'll take your video clip, you upload your video to it, and it will automatically translate it for you into different languages. Let me just get to the right point. So I'm going to play this for you. Um, so it's going to. I think in this in this demo I put together. Yeah, I, do, I think I'm going to do Spanish, French, and Hindi. Let me let me uh, know whether these are accurate. This is new. <laughs> let me play that. VVP 6.3 se lanzará el 7 de agosto de 2023. Aquí en 240 sec viene. Menu mobile différent du menu de bureau. 
Accédez à votre navigation principale ici si vous avez plusieurs menus. Ye style book bahut shandar hai kyunki aap sabhi block dekh sakte hain aur vyaktigat block ke dahine aur style badal sakte hain. So, I mean, that's kind of um that's kind of mind blowing for me. Um you just upload your video and it automatically creates the translations. It does the lip lip syncing as well. I've got absolutely uh no idea how it works. Uh we're also seeing the first steps of uh text to video. I've got to do one thing here. Text to video. So this is a tool called Runway, which you may have heard about. This will take a text prompt. Uh, so in this case, a big ocean wave at daybreak, cinematic film, moody, high resolution, and it'll actually create a video for you. So it's straight text to video. Now at the moment, these are, and here's the example. I mean, it's pretty amazing. But it's all generated by A, so it is amazing, but it's still not, in my view, quick enough uh, to be properly usable usable in a video workflow. Here's just some other some other examples. These are all generated by text to prompt. And they're, they're pretty mind blowing, but you can see the direction of child travel. We are going to have text to video um, fairly soon. And my daughter's about to go to film school on Saturday for three years. And I can only imagine that what, what her workflow is going to look like in three years. It's going to be extraordinary. Um, we're also seeing that some page builders and some themes are starting to integrate AI directly in them. So we, uh, Divi have announced it, Elementor. I've had a sneak peek of Cadence as well, which is looking cool. Um, they're not quite, uh, Cadence isn't quite ready yet, but it's going to be uh, really interesting. And then, right, on to some predictions. So, <laughs> oh, hold on, let me go back a bit. So here's three predictions for you based on the conversations I've had, the tools I've seen, and my understanding of where of WordPress. Uh, prediction number one. Uh, the AI battle is going to move upstream. And what I mean by that is going to move closer to where the customer first interacts with WordPress. And the first place a lot of the time that happens is with the hosting company. So I think we're going to see hosting companies have a relentless focus on AI. In fact, we're already seeing that. So yesterday I um, was installing a site. Let me go forward a bit. This is GoDaddy. So this is what happens now if you go onto WordPress um, managed hosting, and they actually are asking you questions at this point to kind of get you through the process more quickly. And you're saying, what kind of question do you want? What kind of um, website do you want? So I'm, in this case, I'm saying a photography website, giving it a name, uh, choose your data center, and then it's going to give you some templates, essentially, and I'm choosing that one. And then choose your WordPress username, and you know, within about 60 seconds, you've got a WordPress website built using Gutenberg again, the block editor. So I do think we're going to see a, a big battle in terms of um, AI moving upstream. That's definitely going to be really interesting to watch. With go so GoDaddy have got that hosting. Uh, hosting I have announced um, their own solution, and I know Shopify isn't WordPress, but they have integrated AI nicely into their solution as well. So I think a few things. A few things drop out from that, um, which is going to be interesting. Um, I do think there's going to be a further commoditization of web design, no doubt. Um, there's a risk there will be less discovery for WordPress plugin developers and theme developers because actually a lot of the decisions are going to be made up here by AI or by the hosting companies. Um, there's definitely going to be more power for hosting companies if they do this right, but we've got to assume they're going to do it right, but that's a tough thing to do uh, because they're not product companies, they're hosting companies. I think this is, um, I can't imagine that this won't, these won't, these solutions won't all be uh, Gutenberg based. It just seems like an obvious thing that this is going to happen. So I think actually this is going to give Gutenberg an even bigger push. Um, then I think that this, the result of this, there will be less churn for newbies. I think this is going to lower the friction of getting WordPress sites um, up and running. I've been training people on WordPress for 10 years and I see the problems they have just in this bit. I think it's going to squash the learning curve. And I do think we're going to have some happier customers. So I actually think, you know, some of this is scary, but I think we're going to, it's going to be good for WordPress, this stuff, because it's going to lower the, you know, the famous five minute install is going to get even easier. Right. Second big prediction um, AI content becomes dynamic and intelligent. So I think we're, we've gone through phase one of AI, which is we're all general, well, lots of us are generating lots and lots of content using AI tools. That's great. And we're, you know, publishing all that content. 
but it's just kind of static content at this point. I think the next the next interesting phase of AI and where it gets really exciting is it will become dynamic and intelligent. So what I mean by that is imagine you've got this little AI tool that's just whirring away in the background on your website that can dynamically do stuff based on users' behavior. So it might be monitoring the health of your website, or it might be seeing what people are buying through your website and dynamically changing the content and personalizing the content to their to their behavior. So I think that's that's a really that's a really, 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 really interesting space. So I think we're going to see some people entering that. That's going to be super exciting. And then my final prediction is this: that authentic content and brand are going to become even more important because there's, the, the internet is going to be filled with AI content, and the companies and organisations and people that can create authentic um, content that's going to and build trust through that content is going to have enormous value and I think trust is going to be one of the most important assets for any business over the next few years because AI content is going to fill our world with stuff that isn't potentially trustful and I'm not sure you can build trust easily by just pumping out AI content well I know you can't so I think that's really interesting in fact a recent limited has been completely filled with content uh, where it's been generated books that have been generated by AI and they appear to be um, really good but actually when you read them they're completely untrustworthy and wrong confidently wrong in a lot of cases so if I had one lesson or one recommendation for any of you out there at the moment it would be have a relentless focus on building uh, maintaining and communic communicating trust uh, through your brands and through your products have a complete focus on that um, super brilliant thank you everyone I hope that was interesting there was there was a there was a lot to go through there but um, Petra are you there any questions Petra, we can't hear you. Petra's gone, everyone. She'll be back. Hi. Hey. Okay. I had to refresh. Technology failed me. Uh, apologies for that, everyone. Uh, let's jump right into the questions. Um, so, how do you see the role? of designers changing in this AI future? I think you actually kind of answered that, I think, in the final sections of your presentation, but if you have any more thoughts. I think I think they're just, at the moment, they're, they're just going to be great tools that we can use to be um, more creative and more productive, is my, is my view on it. But I think with all this stuff, it's very, it's very hard to give concrete answers of of where this is where this is where this is going and i think the key is to be adaptive because it's going to change the next two years are going to things are going to change really quickly and i think the most important thing is to be open to to that change so nobody really knows what's going to happen in you know as i said my daughter's doing films uh, a filmmaking course um for three years who knows what the world's going to look like in you know a year for her or three years you know she's going to be using Da Vinci Resolve for the first year, but who knows what she's going to be doing in three years? It's impossible to say. So, thank you. 
<laughs> Great. Uh, there are a couple of very particular questions kind of asking you to share uh, the links to the tools that you just uh, showcased. Uh, if there, that's a possibility, like, I don't know whether people can find them in your uh, YouTube channel or like you'd like to share them after the event. Um, yeah, happy to do that. We'll, we'll, um, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, uh, somebody in the audience in the chat asked, are there any great plugins for Adobe XD wireframes or content generation? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't, maybe I'm not sure. I haven't covered any in my, in my travels through the AI universe so far. Right. Okay. Uh, cool. This is one I don't really get, but like, I'm hoping that you will. Can we get a list of a zip WP type way to generate a WordPress site that does not have wait list? A list of zip, right. Yeah, at the moment. Um, so I think the question is about ZipWP, which is a tool oh. that you can create a website. So I think somebody, I think Jeffrey is asking for another way of doing that that doesn't have a wait list. Um, so I'm not aware. I'm not aware of one at the moment. Um, I know that I know they are rolling out it um, as quickly as possible to people. They're just being quite deliberate about it because it's. Um, I think they had like twenty thousand people waiting for it. So it's. Um, they just want to make sure it doesn't crash the servers as they roll it out. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not, I think that's the only one I know of. <laughs> okay. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the last two questions are just asking for, um, there's one that is asking for your top 10 list. Do you have like a favorite one? Do you have like a couple of favorite ones that you'd like to highlight? Uh, I like, I went to AI tools. Yeah. Um, so yeah, probably Photoshop, if I'm honest. I'm a, I'm a sort of visual guy at heart. So, you know, I'm, I think that's kind of really exciting and cool. All right. Thank yeah. you. Photoshop yeah. beta. Not, not, you have to get the beta of it right. to, okay. to get it working. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Jamie. This was really exciting to kind of witness all of these things in practice. And cool. uh, I've written down your script predictions, and I'm going to be uh, following along and seeing, like, trying to. Uh, <laughs> you whether your predictions come true uh cool. thank you enjoy your day and thanks so much for uh joining us and sharing your stuff thanks everyone. Bye, everyone bye see you in the next session everyone uh in just a couple of minutes